Hi, so my name's Ollie from Edge to Edge SEO and we specialize in flooring marketing. And in this video, uh, we're just gonna go through how you can create the perfect local flooring company website. So uh, I'll get straight into this uh, video and, and show you really. This video is specifically for local flooring companies, not e-commerce companies or anything like that. This is local flooring companies that have a physical location and they wanna sell to the local area. And what we're gonna learn in this is how you can generate more leads through your website how you can convert more leads and how you can provide a better customer experience. And this is then going to enable you to grow your flooring company, to have happier customers and to make more money. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing when you're looking at a flooring company's website that we need to think about is the structure. And what we need is a hierarchy of information. So generally, this is how you would structure a website. You would say that the top level is your site concepts, your niche. So the top level is going to be flooring. Or if you're a wood flooring company, then it would be wood flooring. Then everything else from there would filter down in a logical order. So let's say that if you was a flooring company, you might offer carpets, LVT, wood, laminate. So flooring is the top level site concept. Everything else filters down below that. And again, you know, let's say that you're a wood flooring company, then you're gonna wanna go wood flooring, then parquet flooring, and herringbone flooring, and so on. So the thing is, you don't go any deeper than four tiers. You'd have your site concept, which is flooring, and then from there, you might go down to carpet. So carpet would be tier two. From carpet, you might then have stair runners. So stair runners would be tier three. So you'd only go one deeper than that if you needed to. And this is so you've got a good depth of information and that your site is structured logically. So let's talk about the services that you offer and how you'd structure this. So a little bit like I was just saying, you want to think about how they relate to your main overall site concept. So, so you can see here that if you offer commercial, then your that would be a tier, that would be a tier two piece of content, and then within commercial, you might offer safety flooring and resin flooring, so they would be tier three. Let's look at domestic. Domestic would be tier two. Carpets might be tier three, and stair runners might be tier four. And again, you could do the same with wood. So something else that's going to help you with structuring your website is by performing some keyword research. Obviously, I know if you're a flooring company owner, then you should know your business inside out. But a little bit of keyword research is gonna help you just understand how to actually structure your website a little bit more. So for example, if you used to put the keyword carpet into a keyword research tool, then that keyword research tool is then gonna generate you all of the other related keywords to carpet. That would then allow you to see which pages you could create uh, that relate to carpet and would be uh, the tier under carpet. And these here are the keyword tools that you could use. These are just some suggestions. Uh, personal favorite of mine is SEM Rush. Uh, Uber Suggest is a, a free one. I think they've got a paid version as well. And keyword Google Keyword Planner is also a free and, and good tool. And don't just rely on uh, keyword research tools. Use your experience. You know, as someone that works within a flooring company, you're, you're gonna know the different keywords that you need to target instinctively. And also think from a customer's perspective, you know, what would they be searching to try and find your products and services? And would it be logical for them to, you know, let's say that they was trying to find stair runners, would they need a separate page for that? Or would they generally just go to the carpet page? You know, this is down to you to think about these things. And then use Google, use related searches. You know, every time you type in a, a keyword onto Google and you get the related searches uh, come up at the bottom of the page, and then you get the Google suggest box as, as you start typing. Uh, and then there's also the people also ask uh, which are obviously questions about uh, related to uh, the keyword that you've searched but they are also within those questions there are going to be keywords that you could think about as well so how do we build out local pages let's say that you want to target the local area for the different products and services that you offer how do we do that so generally the way that you would do it you'd want to create pages for each area and each product and service that you offer so for example if you wanted to target let's say south london and you wanted to target carpet within that area then this is how you would structure that page you go flooringservices.com forward slash south london forward slash carpet so again you think about this from a user's point of view if they land on that page they know that you are offering carpet services within the south london area let's say that you wanted to target stair runners specifically then your url structure and your page structure might look like this uh, floorandservices.com forward slash Manchester forward slash carpet floor, forward slash uh, stair runners and then you can see here that I've done some other examples as well so let's say that you're targeting wood flooring there will be floorandservices.com forward slash London forward slash wood and again you could go down into the sub services of wood again by by structuring your URL like this so internal linking is also a massive part uh, of structuring your site and making it user friendly. So first things first is think about this in a logical way. Don't just link to anything and everything on every single page. You'd have to actually 
you do have to think about what you're linking to to make sure that it's logical for the reader and for the user. Let's say that you was a flooring company and you had quite a lot of articles and content around carpets, then you'd want to make sure all of those articles and that content all links together. You'd want to internally link back and forth to those pages. And to link back and forth to those pages, you'd want to use descriptive anchor text. So let's say that you had an article on how to fit carpets and you wanted to link from that from your carpet in London page, then the anchor text should be something like how to fit carpets so that people know exactly where that text is gonna take them if they click it. And internal linking should also be about helping people find what they're looking for. If they're reading an article on how to fit carpets, they might wanna know how to clean carpets after that. So you'd have to anticipate what they're gonna be potentially looking at after they've read that article or whilst they're reading that article. And another little thing that I like to say is think like Wikipedia. Because if you look at any Wikipedia page, they are constantly internally linking to all of the most relevant pages within that piece of content. So once we've structured your site, the next thing that we're gonna to want to look at is conversion. As a flooring company, there are certain things that you need on your page in order for it to convert the best. You know, if you're gonna start diverting traffic to your website, if you're gonna be doing marketing campaigns to try and get people to find your website, then you're gonna want them to convert when they land on your site. You're not gonna want them to land on your site and then click back off because you haven't optimized for conversions. And here's a few ways that you can do that. So the first thing that we wanna look at is your call to actions. So the first thing to note is limit the amount of options you're gonna give people uh, when they land on your site. Sometimes you go on a site and they've got, you know, three, four, five different ways of contacting them or uh, five different things that they want you to do when they land on their site. You know, this is gonna confuse people and eventually what's gonna happen is they're not gonna take any action at all because there's too many options. So limit the amount of options, make it make people think less and take more action. You know, If you've only got one or two call to actions, it's gonna be so much easier for them to process that and it's more likely they're actually gonna click one of those call to actions and go ahead with it. You know, and similar to that is don't give them too many ways to contact you or make inquiries, you know. Do you want them to fill out a contact form? Do you want them to ring you? Make it clear. And then another really simple thing is just to have descriptive buttons. There's so many times you just go on a website and it just says click here, but if you don't know what you're actually gonna click and what the result of that click is gonna be, then why would you click it? So use bright colors and inviting shapes, make them big and bold, and then write on the button what it is that you want them to do. For example, click here to make an appointment with us. Click here to get a free estimate. Something else to think about is the benefits and USPs. You know, what is the unique selling points of your business? Why would people want to use you over their competitors? And it can be little things, you know, it can be things like timekeeping, tidiness, make it clear, have statistics and things like that to back this up. You know, a lot of companies will track all this sort of stuff. Uh, and to show people the benefits and USPs of using you. And then lastly, be the guide. Help visitors see the way, help them visualize their end goal. So show them pictures of what their house could look like after they've used you. Guide them to make their buying decisions and they'll feel a lot more confident when it comes to actually purchasing because they're gonna feel like they're the ones that have actually come up with these ideas about what flooring to choose for their room, even though you have guided them in that decision. FAQs. This is a really simple one, but every single product and service you have is probably gonna have its own unique FAQ. So you wanna answer all of the most common questions about a product and service that you offer. You wanna add these to all of the relevant pages. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna minimize objections because you would have already set the objections up front. It's gonna stop people from wasting your time. So there's gonna be less people that are emailing you and ringing you up, asking you the same old questions. And again, using FAQ schema is also a way to get a little bit more visibility on the search results. And like I mentioned, you wanna put these on the products and services page. Now this is a really simple one that so many businesses get wrong and it's just simply having a legible text size. So just have text that people can read clearly. Don't make it too small, use easy to read fonts and bold information where needed. Use all of the headings in the correct way and just make your page that much easier to understand. And this should be a standard for every website these days because of how much people obviously use their, their phones. So making your site mobile friendly, there's a lot of websites out there that I doubt have even been checked to see if they actually work on mobile. So, you know, it's just a really simple one. Uh, just make sure that your site is, is working correctly on mobile. You know, all of the buttons work, all of the call to actions work, everything scales down correctly. Uh, and it doesn't just look a mess. So this is probably the biggest way that is actually gonna convert people uh, when they land on your site, and this is social proof. So there's lots of different types of social proof that you can implement on a flooring website, and ideally you wanna, you wanna implement all of them if you can. So we'll just go through them in no particular order, but portfolio, so you know, have you got a portfolio page? Are you adding regular images of your work 
to your website and are they being displayed on the most important pages for example your home page or the services page or the location pages so people when they land on your site they can see clearly and easily this is the work you've done and it's good quality the next thing a little bit similar to portfolio is case studies so a portfolio in my opinion is just chucking images in a gallery uh, and not really explaining them too much whereas case studies is going a lot more in depth uh, into those um, into particular jobs and again like portfolio they need to be displayed in your home page and they need to be displayed in all of the right product services pages and location pages and a, a case study is a chance for you to really explain the problems that you're solving uh, the before and afters how happy it made the customer uh, and you know the difference that you've made to people's lives and their homes and then social media content so if you're posting regularly on social media and you should be whether it be your personal account or whether it be your uh, your business account you want to make sure that, that feed is coming up somewhere on your website but Instagram is obviously a big place for flooring companies because flooring is a very visual trade so if you're posting a lot on Instagram and it's easy enough to do uh, and if you've got that feed onto your on on your home page or something then that's going to act a little bit like your portfolio where it's showing people all of the work you're doing and it's showing that you're doing good quality work on a regular basis and it's not just add in social media to your feed also make sure that all of your uh, social media links are added to your site and generally they want to be in the footer of the website accreditation so whatever accreditations that you've got you should be displaying them on your website these are very important to display uh, that's going to build trust if someone lands on your site you know if they land on your site from let's say a location page and they can see that you've got all the right accreditations for the job that they need you to do uh, then that's just one extra tick in their head and then similar to accreditations brands you work with or stock if there's a particular product like Antico or quick step or something like that uh, that you stock and you work with them then display that on your site show people that you are working with these trusted flooring uh, manufacturers and brands and, and you're stocking these brands and, and stuff and then lead generation sites I'm talking about trust the trader bark my builder all of those you might not like those very much but if you've got those logos and you've got links to those pages on your website again this is going to build trust when people land on there because they can see you're not just in one place you're everywhere and ideally all of those websites would have uh, reviews on them as well and then addresses and maps so make sure that you've got your address in the footer of your website and then also make sure that you've got maps at the bottom of your pages or somewhere on your page so people can visually see where you are or the areas that you cover it's so much easier to see if someone covers a particular area or is based in a particular area if there's a pin there or it's sort of you know there's a sort of a line drawn around the area that you cover uh, as opposed to actually reading it you know people are very lazy they would rather just see things visually than read through your content and then reviews if you're getting regular reviews which every local flooring company should be then you need to display these on your home page you also need to display them on all of your sales pages and your landing pages and your location pages and ideally you want to put you want these feeds to come direct from the place that you're getting the reviews from for example if you're getting loads of reviews on google reviews then there are going to be plugins and ways of directly uh, getting that data from Google and displaying it on your site as opposed to you just copy and pasting reviews. Um, it's just not as authentic if you do it like that. And then a new section. So what's going on in your business? Not every company is going to need a new section, but you know the more you grow and the more that goes on within your company, probably the more news that there's going to be uh, within your company. So this is just a way you know to show people that things are going on, uh, whether you're moving unit, whether you're opening a new store, uh, whether you're stocking a new uh, brand or something like that, whether you've taken on new staff, this is all newsworthy and it's just giving that more human element to your business uh, and again it's going to help with conversion. It's going to help with people trusting you a little bit more. And then blogging, so whatever services that you offer, you should really be writing about those services uh, and showing that you're the expert within that market. So for example, if you're just purely uh, a carpet company, then you should know there everything there is to know about carpeting uh, and about how it how it's fitted, how it's uh, maintained, and all of the different types of carpet and the different styles and brands. So you want to be writing regular content ab about these products. You want to be demonstrating to people that you are you are truly experts and you do know what you're talking about. And this should all be displayed on your homepage and all of the um, relevant pages. So, for example. Uh, you know, if you are a general flooring company and one of your services is uh, carpet and the other one's LVT uh, and the other one's laminate, um, then and you start writing a lot of articles about carpet, then you don't want to make sure that those articles are then uh, displayed on the carpet page. So then it makes that page more relevant to carpet and anyone visiting that carpet page can see that you actually know what you're talking about uh, for that particular product and service. 
and then images and videos so use your own images where you can you know if you're going out fitting a lot of jobs it's probably quite easy for you to snap some photos at the end of it and I'd imagine nearly every single flooring company in the country would not leave a, a job without taking a photo of it before they leave. So make sure that you get these images and actually use them on your website. You'll probably find quite often you can go on you know five or six different flooring company websites and you're going to find the same in images on every single website because they've been on a stock website you know and they've found the same images whereas if you was to go out there get your own images uh, and then get them on your site it's that is gonna make your business a little bit different from somebody else's. And it's gonna make it more authentic. So just following on from the same point really, uh, authentic images, so like I was saying, use your own images uh, of work if possible. Uh, take before and afters, you know, there's, there's some houses that you probably go to and it's in a right old state. Uh, you know, the carpet could have been down for 10 years, the dog could have pissed on it or whatever. Uh, and you could go in there and, and just completely transform the place. And a good carpet and good new flooring does completely transform a room so show that show the state of it before and show the absolute um, transformation after you've uh, fitted that floor in and have also another thing uh, is to have photos of your vans your team your warehouse and your showroom so you know it's, it's, a, it's not just about taking photos of your jobs it's about taking photos of you know the ins and outs of your business showing uh, people that your team you know pictures of your team smiling on your on your uh, on your website uh, show your vans so that people then can recognize your vans when you're out and about um, show your warehouse your showrooms show how tidy it is and how organized you are and how inviting it is for people to come down to see you and it goes without saying all of these images should be high quality you know invest in a good camera if you need to but generally I mean most iPhones and most smartphones now uh, are really high quality uh, pictures so it's more about the user uh, than it is uh, the actual phone itself so uh, even if it means that you've got to take a um, uh, a short online course about how to take photos uh, that is advisable because you will get that much better quality pictures from it and then similar to images is obviously authentic videos so if you can create videos then you know that's going to be good as well so you want to be creating uh, videos of you installing uh, you want to you can time lapse that you, you could then buy a tripod and you could uh, create a time lapse of you installing something um, you could get drone footage if it's a commercial building. You can take videos of inside your showroom or warehouse. You can even create virtual videos now uh, from specialist photographers where you can actually go through your warehouse a bit like uh, how you go around uh, on Google Maps. And then also behind the scenes videos, you know, just like what's going on the day to day. People like seeing this stuff, you know, it gives your business um, more of a human element uh, and people enjoy seeing uh, what actually goes on behind the scenes of companies. And then the copy, so what is actually written on your website? It's gotta be well-researched content. You can't just be putting things on there, uh, you know, that's factually incorrect. Uh, you have to also um, externally link uh, to wherever you're getting this information from. You know, this I'm talking more about blog style articles at the moment. If you're writing a, a long form piece of content, we're talking 2000 words or so uh, about a particular um, a topic, uh, let's say to do with carpets, uh, then you want to make sure everything you're saying in there is factually correct. And if you are uh, getting that information from somewhere, then you want to link to those sources. And then, uh, you know, you've got to understand the difference between um, blog content and content that converts. You know, you need to uh, know the purpose of each page uh, and what each piece of copy serves. So you don't really want to be putting too much informational content on a sales page because the chances are no one's really going to read it. All they want to know is what are the benefits of buying this particular product and service. They might want to know things like price and stuff like that. So your content is going to be a hell of a lot different uh, on a sales page or a location page uh, than it is to, you know, like a blog article or something like that. And I see it time and time again where people just chuck tons of content on location pages and sales pages because they think that's what's going to get them higher in the search results when that's not actually true and then leading on from that is optimized for search engine so understand search intent you know whatever keyword you're targeting understand what people actually want from that keyword and write the content that is actually going to satisfy that intent understand the difference between informational keywords uh, and transactional keywords that's the main two keywords that you need to understand and you need to write the right copy for it so keep the quality high and I see this all the time uh, across so many local business websites where uh, you know maybe the, the owner uh, is writing very low quality content for the sake of writing content 
uh, or they've they've hired someone um, uh, very bad from perhaps a different country or something like that. And then all they're doing is just churning out content for the sake of it. Every piece of content you add to your site should have a purpose and it should be good quality. You know, you write as many words as you need to write. You don't just write 500 words just to get it done quickly. Uh, you, If that, that article re- requires 2,000 words, you write 2,000 words. You know, you write as much as you need to cover that topic in its entirety. And like I mentioned, low quality will harm your site. Search engines will not index low quality content. Uh, and it's almost like, you know, if you've got too much low quality content on your site, that's going to lower the overall quality of your site. So that is it. That is how you create the perfect local flooring company website. Um, you know, I hope these tips have been helpful. I can go in a lot more detail in each of these topics. But today I just thought I'd cover this topic very lightly so you can get a grasp of what it is that you need to do on your website. Uh, and you can get a rough idea, you know, if you're, if you're rebuilding your website, you can get a rough idea of the most important parts and areas to focus on. So yeah, that's it for the video. Uh, now I do have uh, what I call the ultimate flooring online marketing checklist, which you can download from my website on edge to edge seo.com forward slash checklist and this checklist will have a lot of this stuff that we spoke about within this video today and you can download that for free on my website and yeah just run through that checklist and see how it compares to your website and make the changes where needed please like this video and if you're a flooring company and a flooring company owner and you want to hear more and more information good quality information about how you can market your flooring company then subscribe to this channel as well uh, visit my website edge to edge seo.com uh, if you want to book an appointment with me uh, and then also you know follow me on all the socials so obviously fo- uh, subscribe to me on youtube follow me on uh, instagram uh, facebook and also twitter uh, where i'll be constantly posting uh, good information about how you can market your flooring company